We're in the Mimer, and I want to write, go right away to the text, because we haven't learned much of the text. So we're on page uh, 130, 130. <coughs> we're at, um, it's, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six lines for the top, the third word, So this was our question. Ma bechlal. Why is Mincha so special? And what is the aspect, the role, the concept of, of mincha in a person's particular avoid the service of God? To understand this, the next it says, That was the evening, was the morning, one day. The tachlis avoido shiyir pchinas echod. The posik is not just a posik speaking about creation. This posik, this posik is all about another aspect. What is this? What is this about? This posik is about the idea of the idea of a purpose of creation. It was evening and it was morning. Yom echod to reveal echod. The whole idea of a day is to reveal one, the unity of Hashem. In other words, and everything that we do throughout those 24 hours, which means our entire life, because our entire life it consists of 24 hours each day of our life, it should all be in a, in a way of echod, one. To create one. Is there unity in our life? A person gets up in the morning and he says, last night I had this falling out with my spouse or I had it with my employer or with my teenagers or my rabbi. Is this echad? Is this one? Obviously it's not. So how am I going to make it echad? You have another day to make it echad. So the whole idea is to bring achdus into the world. So you're going on a trip, you're driving somewhere to the Face to the to the show up up to the Galilee here there, you have to ask yourself how am I going to make this trip to to show my children and grandchildren a nice time echod? That's the question. That's the mindset that every one of us has to have every single day of our life. Obviously, teaching people how to protect themselves, shooting, protect themselves. He has to ask himself how am I going to be teaching them about protecting themselves to bring Echad into the world. That is the question. Let's continue. And he says, The four sides of the world, east, west, south, north. The seven heavens, the of the earth. Avram, Echad, Aleph, Ches, Dalit. We need to bring the Aleph, which is Aluf Yishalaylam, the master of the universe, into Ches, into the seven heavens and the earth, which equals seven and one, eight, and Dalit, the four sides of the world, we have to bring the Aleph of Echad, which stands for Aluf Shalom, the master of the world. Shehu Ein Sof Aluf Shalom. He's infinite, God is infinite, the master of the world. And when we do that, Zeu Yoim Echad, then we have Yoim Echad, Hagilui dechod. You see the, the Rebbe's taich kechever. Look, yo means day. Echod means one. Day. It's shah. I'm looking outside the window. You guys have a, the sun coming in, hopefully, or at least it's light out there. Yoim echod. It's bright. It's yom. Yom represents gilui. What's the famous ayoyim yoyim moshe? The Baal Shem Tov hot hot gilui hot licht. The Baal Shem Tov loved light. I always come home, when I come home from Shuli, I say to my wife, put the lights on, open the curtains. I like light. I don't like darkness. I want the room to be lit up, illuminated. Gilu Dechod. It's not enough to say, oh, I'm creating a chod in my bedroom, in my private house, in my this or that. No, Yoim Echod. You have to create unity all over. Somehow, I remember the Rebbe once spoke about the Knesset. He spoke about, he said, if they're going to sit down and discuss things that they disagree with, they're not going to get anywhere. Let them 
first and foremost, discuss things that they agree with. Get peace between the people. Once you feel good, then you're not talking at each other, but with each other. And that's the whole problem in, in, in relationships, when it's not we are with each, with each other, we're at each other. And when it's, if you begin with at each other, you, that conversation is going to go nowhere and even worse. But if you begin with brotherly love, sisterly love, Abbas Yisrael, we're all in the same boat, and we want to figure this out together, then you can find a solution. Let's continue. The Gilui de Echod, what we have to do is create a revelation of Echod of unity. And in order for there to be the revelation of Echod, how do you do that? Through the evening and the morning. In order for there to be light in the morning, while you day hagdomas who avoided the erev, you have to first preface the evening time. The scholars who avoided the erev. Let's get this through our skulls here, heaven. In order for the morning to go well, you gotta begin the night before. First comes erev. By he erev, and then comes Baike morning. What's erev? She tefilas arbis bechlal. It's overall, it's the evening service. Mariv, ukriya shva shel amita bifrat. More specifically, it's not those five minutes or ten minutes it takes you to daven mariv, but it's the avoda what we call kriya shma on your bed, as he'll explain in a moment. Let's see what he says. Obey er dover zehu. To explain this, the avoid the Krishna Shalabita. And this is an important chapter we're going to learn now because it's not spoken about much in Hasidis as well as in other Sforim. You know, Krishna Shalabita is one of these topics that's been shoved under the rug. I mean, it is not the custom of the average Jew to say midnight prayers, Tikkun Chatzos. Number two, um, even those that say it, you know, they don't, normally they don't say it the way it, it, it the way it says it should be said in, in the Svarim, in the Holy Svarim. And number three, in, in, um, in Hasidic tradition, uh, there is no emphasis on the, on, on that. And the Alter Rebbe already in his Igeres HaTshuva, I believe, alludes to it when he speaks about not fasting, not doing heavy fasts for a tikkun for tshuva, which we understand from that is that it used to be that the way you gain tshuva was to fast a lot. So the Alter Rebbe says, nevertheless, you could, you know, gain certain basic fasts that you need for certain transgressions, 84 fasts, for a transgression of, uh, of, of, of wasting of seed, for example. So he says, if in the winter you fast half days, till chatzos, and you combine those half days, and you get 84 days. So he, it's not as though the Alter Rebbe throws out the ba baby with the bath water completely, but the idea of excessive fast is something the Alter Rebbe says today, and meaning for... For hundreds of years, it's been substituted through tzedakah. And I say clearly, this is the Alter Rebbe shita. Others uh, maybe have a different shita, but uh, those that speak about it, which are very few. But but yes, yes, Hillel. Just, uh, just appropriate that we're learning this the first week of Shabbat there. Yes. Uh, comment and uh, second, is there a connection between Kriyashma Lamita? And fasting? I, I didn't understand the jump. There. Um, I, I, I did make a jump. And yes, there is a connection. The connection is the purpose of both is for, is for Tikkun and Tshuva. And, and, and we're going to learn about this now soon. The whole concept of making a Chesh Ben Anefesh is to correct yourself, to fix yourself, to, to do a Tikkun to yourself. And the idea of fasting too. Um, I would say that the Tikkun... The tikkun through through fasting, as it's inscribed in the Arizal, <coughs> is more specific to the particular sin. You know, the, the, the certain sins requires a certain amount of fast. 
<coughs> in Krishna Shalamita, it's not as though for this sin, this issue, do Krishna Shalamita for 15 minutes. And for this one, do it for a half an hour. It doesn't work that way. But the overall idea is the idea of, of Tikkun, absolutely. So there's the Tikkun Prati, the specific ticket of a particular transgression. And then there's the Tikkun Klali, the overall Tikkun has done through Krishna Shalabita. But, but, but I do want to finish the point about the, the, the fast, because it's important. And that's why, uh, since you mentioned it, Hillel, that's why certain communities, Chabad included, there is no emphasis on the Shovavim. Whereas many other communities, uh, probably most Hasidic communities, do make an emphasis uh, on Shovavim. But I, I, do, I do have to say that, again, there, from what I've seen in the community, um, I, I must say, I don't see it as real, <laughs> real uh, show of him. I, I, I've been, you know, again, I, at least around here, maybe that just rolls different, but around here, you know, um, it, it's pretty light, you know, it's pretty light. Um, but, you know, it's a tradition that they, that the people do, and, but, I, but if you look into the Svara Makdashim, uh, you see that it's a very serious, uh, uh, very serious avayda, uh with a lot of rigidity and morbidity in a way, you know, and sadness, and you know, and the purpose of which is to do tshuva for your. You feel really bad that you did a certain sin. You know, it's not just about fasting a, a half an hour and and going uh, to the club later or to to a pizza store and and just uh, you know being silly. It, it's a whole different avayda. But be, be that as it may, be that as it may. The Alter Rebbe, the Balatanya, he's of the Shita that uh, today we substitute fast, uh, tzedakah for fasting. And that's why the Alter Rebbe speaks clearly in the Gerasa Chufa on a fast day to give the equivalent amount of tzedakah of what you would eat. So if you eat a, a each day $15 worth of food, if you have those $15, you should give on a fast day $15 to tzedakah. Ten dollars, ten dollars, five dollars, five, whatever. It's called Igre de Pirke, Igre de Tainusa, the, 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 the exchanging the tainus. So that's the Alter Rebbe Shita. That's the Alter Rebbe Shita in the Tanya. Okay? The Rebbe, by the Rebbe himself, you should know, was a big faster. And his father, Rebbe Levi Yitzchak, already cautions him in his letters to him, not to fast excessively. Rabbi Hutner would say over of Chaim Berlin, the great, the Gaon, he would say to, to the Babachers, you don't know your Rebbe, I know him from, you know, from Berlin when I was there, and, and his teeth were f- going to fall out from the excessive fast that he fasted. I mean, it's an, ex- you know, it's an exaggeration, but he means that the Rebbe was a big faster. And the same Rabbi Salavechik. Rabbi Salavechik tells over, the, his student repeated it, that, that um, he invited the Rebbe for a coffee or tea, you know, in, in Berlin, you know, you sat outside. Of it, and he, he, you know, he wanted to, to schmooze with, with, with they were friends. One second, one second. So he says that uh, it, if he invited him, I think on Monday or Thursday, he would say, I can't come. Why? He figured out later it's because he was fasting, because of shame of him. So what a person does themselves, be that be it the Rebbe or any, any, any Lubavitcher, that's an individual thing. But as a klal, as a rule, um, Chabad was did not use the mode of fasting for tshuva. Yes, Yadison. Yeah, was not to have what? I didn't hear what he said. What did he say? Meat? Oh yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. That's why when he ate the the murder, you know, you could it was in public. Uh, you could see how it was. Uh, he didn't have teeth, you know. It was hard, hard. Anyway, let's go back to our our discussion of Kishmishalabita. 
אבוי דקי שבילה ביתו הוא באשר עוד דמי שחש בין הצדק על כל באשר עוד ולא באשר היום What is it that we're supposed to do when we say Kirsh Mashal Abita? You're supposed to make a cheshben, an account of whatever happened to me during the day. Avram, pretty simple, right? I got up at six, seven o'clock. What did I do? Where did I go? And as you, as you think about your day, okay? Is that clear? Very clear. And the Rebbe adds words, Moshe. Part of that thinking is what should have been a, the way I should have behaved and how did I actually behave. In other words, I know that I should have taken out the garbage for my wife and family and instead I said, no, nah, let them deal with it. <laughs> I know I should have uh, said goodbye to my chaber in shul, and I said I abruptly left shul and let him stand, left him standing there like a lone dog. <laughs> I know that's the type of thinking, okay? Masherolios, uh, how should I have really conducted myself? Umasherolios, and how did I actually behave? And the Rebbe now is going to lay out for us in graphic terms what I just said. L let's look how he, how he sees it. 1931 in Lita. He's in the heart of Lithuanian Jewry. And this is what he says almost 100 years ago. What was appropriate, the way it should have been. And then as soon as he gets up from asleep, he should get right involved in serving God. As it says, quoting a Pasuk in Parsha Shlach, I believe, the first of your dough, chala, torima, truma. You should separate some of it called chala, and it should be a donation. The word in the Torah, Yonison for dough is Ariso Seichem. Says the Rebbe, the word is associated with another Hebrew word which means crib. A bed, a crib. Ariso Seichem, Lashon Arisa. Is that the word, by the way, that they use today in Hebrew for a crib, Moshe? No. What is the, wo what is the word? Um... I don't say a lul, but lul is, is a chicken coop. Exactly, I was going to say, a lul is a coop, a chicken coop. I don't know what I'm Okay, you find it, you find it while we go on. I'll, I'll, I'll look for a while. We'll go okay, on. so anyway, the Rebbe says, Arisa Seichem, it, it, its etymology is also the word Arisa, which means uh, a crib, a bed. What does this mean? Hilla. Immediately when you get up from your sleep, give God a donation. Right? Literally, the part the Pasik and Pasha refers to taking from your dough a part of it, separating it for challah, right? The mitzvah of chala. The you could say the play on words, although he, the Rebbe says here it's, it's actually not a play on words. But Arisa also means bed. The first of your bed should be to serve God. As soon as you get up on your bed, yes, Moshe. Yeah, you know, it I, is. I, it's, I don't see that it's crib. Crib. And Google says crib, yeah. Okay. Google says what? Crib. Crib. What, you say crib in Hebrew? Yeah, Arisa. Arisa is a crib. Yeah, yeah, but no, we're, 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 we're dumping us. How do you say crib? Like, the coil today in, in, in uh, alright, uh, Google, I don't, I don't want to. You're okay, if you look, look at later. Don't mess with Google, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what should you do? Pamiras bismore tilim. The first donation, when you get up in the morning, that you give to God is saying psalms, tehillim. 
Number two, everyone should study whatever they can. Number three, this is before prayer, before tefillah. Number three, to daven with a minion. Number four, to then go to your business. Based on the guidelines of Torah, being careful, from the dust of deception. Meaning, to steal and cheat is out, outright forbidden. But there's something called avak, like the dust. It's like a gray area. Says the Rebbe. That the Yereshes are to say, says Hechem means that you, if you start your day by saying Tehillim and learning something and davening with a minion, then when you go to work, not only won't you cheat and steal outright, but you'll even be careful from a gray area, which you could argue is, is illegal, but what we would call it today would probably be non-ethical. Avakoy no. Velas is gemilas chasodim, number five. I hope you're putting it down. This is point five. Velas is gemilas chasodim im To do kindness with your friend. After and during your work, think about who needs gemilas chasod. Says the Rebbe, look at this. The whole zehur royu liyos. All of this is what should be. Abul bepoyo, but in actuality, hoya asher. It was ju- it was not that way. Asher hoya take him miyad bekumishnos. As soon as he got up, oisik b'tzorchi abayis. He took out the garbage. He cleaned the pots, and he did many other nice things. But he did it all before saying tilim, learning, and davening. Ulupamim is sometimes kamein is pala but zipper. Guess what? He don't get it. He, he's so involved in cleaning the pots, taking out the garbage, and playing, looking at his computer, and doing business, whatever. He doesn't end up davening with a minion. The goof has to it. Even when he davens, he be mehidas gedayla. It's very rushed. Shein the shemei klal mashuhum edaber. He doesn't hear what's coming out. What you say? What did you just say? I said the words. I know how to say them quickly. Oh, really? Do you know what you said? He doesn't show Maya. He doesn't hear Masha who medaber. balimoy, and his heart is not within him. Mirayv tirdeis of Masha because he has so many concerns and thoughts. Right. He's davening, but he's thinking about, I have to drive to Beitar, I have to drive to Yerushalayim, I have to take my kids in carpool. But you're in the middle of davening now. It's irrelevant now. And afterwards, you're going to be the the entire day. The Rebbe says, we said before that what should be is you should think about how you can help another person. Instead of that, if you if you're on this trajectory of of of, of doing work before davening and being and doing all of that and not knowing what you're saying, you're not going to think about your other the other person. You're only be thinking about what's good for myself, vinyan of agashmi and my material physical world. and about someone else's benefit, or someone else's. Goodness for their soul, the Cheshav of Klal, he doesn't think about it at all. This is all in the morning. But it begins, yes, Moshe. So, so, so the Rebbe is saying that obviously <coughs> we shouldn't be thinking about other things during davening other than the tefillah. He's saying if we're going to think about something, think about how we can help another person. No, he didn't say that. No, he did not say that. I mean, that's not a bad thing, but that's not what he said. He said, later on, when you go to, after you, you, you say tilim before davening, and you, some tilim, 
and you learn some Torah before, and then you dab with a minion, and then you go to your business and you act f uh, proper, not only uh, in, in legal matters, but also in ethical matters, then what will result is as the day goes on, you will be thinking about helping other people. What, what you said is a good thing, but frankly, that's, not the, that's also not the time... When you, when you say, Asher Yeshu Secha, you're supposed to think about how fortunate I am to sit in Hashem's house. Not about helping someone else. That's a good thing, but it doesn't belong at that time. Now, when you get to another part of davening that does speak about doing chesed for someone else, that's when you should think about it. In other words, as we go along our davening and we say the words and we, take, and we, know, and we look at the translation and we know the, the idea behind the words, if the words call for Gebilas Chesed, that's the time to think about it. <coughs> Rabbi Yisrael, uh, if you don't mind muting yourself, we'd appreciate it. Let's continue. By the way, Rabbi Dalton, I, I got word from, I got word back from the house. Here in, deep, in, deep, in, deep, in like modern day Hebrew and Israel, in Israel, they say crib, you also say the word lul. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let's continue. Thank you very much. Now he says, So he comes at night. Okay, so remember, there was a certain way we were supposed to do, and the Rebbe enumerated five things, and there was a certain way, and then I didn't do it this way. So now it comes at night. Avram, you're sitting at night. The day is finished. The kids are in bed. The internet is shut. And it's quiet. So you make a cheshman. What did I do today? Well, how? You close your eyes. Like, what did I do today? Next page, 131. You think about everything that happened the day before. You see in actuality. You realize that whatever you thought is absolutely necessary, being yodei oilam in worldly matters, basic in business, umasa umatn is gomer. What a mistake! I rushed, and I did this. I realized a waste of time. Vashekotach bulaisov and all of my schemes. Was not at all for my benefit. And I didn't make an extra penny from all of my schemes. You realize this when you sit down to make the cheshben. Because you know, Hillel, the cheshben is between you and Hashem. It's a private cheshben. And a person, if they're, they're honest, you know, you could lie to someone else. You could try faking someone else, but to yourself, you know the emes. Not only didn't you make profit, you lost. You spun your wheels, you tried this, you tried that. You went, you spent so much time and you got had a loss. Vima Yamasala Bitsibers, Avi, says the Rebbe, the Tzadik, the Friedek Rebbe. If you would have done with the minion, Shachris, Saharayim, Mincha, for Erev and Bairiv, for Hoyakoveya Itum Toyra, and you would have set and you would set time to learn Toyra. And you wouldn't confuse yourself. Bidibu Hamakshavis Utrochas you say this with all kinds of thoughts. And extra anxieties over Tachvulaisa Babakach and all kinds of schemes which are worthless. He Not only wouldn't you waste your your power, your strength. In Yiddish, dem gesund. There's an expression in Yiddish, de gesund. He loses the health. It's a Yiddish idiom. You know. When a person works so hard, and basically they stress themselves out, and they become sick. So the Rebbe says, if you wouldn't be on this trajectory that you were on, you wouldn't be in, in the situation where you would lose your health. 
Excuse me. Additionally, you would be involved in serving Hashem. That's the whole purpose of serving Hashem. And of the, the whole purpose of the soul coming into the body. Listen to this taich of the previous Rebbe. It's beautiful. Actually, it's not. It's, it's Rashi. <laughs> Hashem says, I have made earth and man I placed upon it. The Masha Anoichi. Misha Anoichi. Shosisi Eretz. Who Bishwila Adam. Not what, but who. The fact that God made man on earth, it is for the purpose. I, I did that. I made man. For the purpose of man, and what's the purpose of man? It's for the word Barasi, which is an acronym equaling 613. As the sages say, God made a condition in my separations with creation. If the Eden will receive the Torah, great. If not, Achzin Eschem, I'll return you, Jews who I made and created, Latoya Vavoy to void and not, to void and not. Why? Because Tachlis Briyas Ha'ilam, because the purpose of creation, who Bishvil Ha'tayna is for Ha'tayna. So what's the point? The point the Rebbe is saying is that rather than putting your energy, your Koyach, into Tachbula shel malbakach. I love the lashon. Tachbula shel malbakach means schemes that are worthless. This and this and this stick and that stick. All these. It, it's so uh, you know. <laughs> if you're able to stand back, and that's the whole idea of a cheshben chevra. The cheshben gives you a time to stand back and to look at something more objectively. It'll be so clear to us that when we do that, that I that it was such a waste of time. I, I think I told you, but years ago when I was in Marin County or Schlichus, and we and, and we were renting <coughs> an office space in a, in a in a in an office complex, and near the office complex was a um, a gas station, an Exxon, on the way in to our five hundred and twenty eight um, planned. Housing community, only houses, Bahavdo, no churches, no synagogues, and the only thing for work <coughs> was this uh, office complex. And on the road, on Lucas Valley Road, was a gas station which had what you would call a makolet, would have a little, and you, know, you could buy something. That's it. Otherwise, you have to drive out to the l- larger stores. And then one day I see the sign on the gas station for sale. Oh, I say, I got to get this for the Chabad house. This is the, the Lucas Valley Road, the main entrance, and we'll have, you know, a bigger place and people will be able to see it. And besides, there's nothing else commercial in the area. My friends, I spent a year's time talking to the executives at Exxon in, in Texas and in many other places. And you probably know when I do research, my entire heart and soul goes into it, and I don't stop. And I, and I got very, very far. And I was at the point of making an offer to buy the property, you know, and I was raising funds for it and exciting the, the community. And then came the big day when the notice came to me or the phone call came to me. We'd love to sell it, but um, there's an issue of gas under underground. What, what do they call that? A gas spill? Uh, leakage. leakage. Leakage, thank you. And we're going to have to do environmental studies. And Chaim Dolphin said, have a good day. I don't have time for this. A year of my life being a lawyer, a broker, a fundraiser, a schmoozer, you know, enough, enough. And I remember saying to myself, in hindsight, 
and I, I'm telling you, I, like, I, I put so much koiches. And okay, it was for a good cause. But at the same time, be honest. And, you know, maybe, maybe uh, I should have been more foresightful in the beginning and preempted all my koiches that I put in by the first issue dealing with the possibility of leakage and verifying that rather than being excited about the opportunity, the grandiose opportunity of having the corner lot with a big menorah and a big sign, Chabad, for everyone to be impressed with and for people to come in, right? And I, and, 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 and I remember clearly, like, like I'm learning it now in the Mimer now, this, I'm talking about 1987, 1988, those years. You're talking about almost 40 years ago. And I exerted myself, exerted, really, you know. And it was, in a way, a waste of time. A pure waste of time. Nothing came of it. Now, <clears throat> you know, everything's Ashgacha Pratis, and I'm sure there were certain Ashgacha Pratis that I don't remember now. But the Rebbe is saying over here, in every day, a person, if they look at their day, and, and if they're... Okay, so I'm <laughs> gotta tell him to, to to anyway. We're gonna stop here because we're having excessive noise coming, and uh, we'll continue tomorrow. Have a great day. Shalom. Bye.